I'm a little bit confused now um, about all this and um, relating to something you said in one of the uh, video I saw of you. You said, we are free to choose if we want to stand as awareness or as a separate self and so experience happiness intermittently. So, there is a choice we can make. And it, it relates to what yes. he said before. But who makes this choice? The separate self that the we separate believe self. ourselves to be. If we believe ourselves to be a separate self, <coughs> then we are, by definition, always making choices as to what will make us happiness, what will make us happy or not. So that's fine. If we think we are a separate self, make the right choice. So when this is said as a concession to the separate self. So the separate self um, could do something right. The, the, the best thing the separate self can do is to explore its nature. The best thing the separate self can do is to turn round upon itself and, and to ask itself, who is this self that I believe and feel myself to be? What am I? That's the highest activity the separate self can engage in. It doesn't very often engage in that activity because, as I said in the conversation with Sven, most of the time the separate self is so busy relieving its suffering by giving its attention to objects that it very rarely ceases giving attention to objects and gives its attention to itself. But the highest thing the separate self can do is to turn its attention around, away from the objects through which it is seeking fulfillment, towards itself, the I that is unhappy, the separate self we believe and feel ourselves to be. That is the highest activity the separate self can engage in. And as the separate self traces its way back to itself, it, it, it discovers a very interesting thing. It discovers that it, at some stage that it is not the separate self it believed itself to be. In other words, this tracing back of the separate self is actually a falling away of our limitations because there is no real entity called a separate self as opposed to another entity called the true self of awareness. There is mm -hmm. just the true and only self, if we can call it a self, of awareness to which a series of limits or upon which a series of limits have been superimposed. So the tracing back of the separate self is the gradual dissolution of these limits. And when all these limits have been seen through, all the things that seemed to limit us, the true and only self of pure awareness stands revealed. Now the limits are, broadly speaking, I am the body and I am the mind. In other words, I am this cluster of thoughts and feelings. And as we explore all these thoughts and fe feelings and sensations, we realize, no, I'm obviously not that. I'm not essentially made out of thoughts. I am aware of my thoughts, but my thoughts flow by and each one disappears. But when they disappear, I don't disappear with them. I remain behind. So I cannot be made out of a thought. And then we notice the same thing is true of feelings. My best feelings, my worst feelings, they all flow by and disappear. But I, the one that knows them, doesn't disappear with them. And even sensations, we only know the body through sensation and perception. Even our sensations and perceptions, they all disappear. But I don't disappear when they disappear. In this way, we, we trace back what we essentially are to this simple field of knowing or presence of awareness. And, and as we trace back, we are, without realizing it to begin with, divesting ourself of all our superimposed limits. This is why Ramana Maharshi said, when I am divested of I, only I remains. When I, the separate self, 
and divested of all the temporary finite limits that thought has superimposed upon it, only I remain. So the I of the separate self and the I of awareness are the same I. This is where the separate self and awareness intersect at I. It's just that awareness becomes the separate self, we could say, or seems to become a temporary finite awareness by rising in the form of the mind with which it superimposes limits on itself in exactly the same way, or rather in a similar way that a screen rises in the form of the image with which it seems to veil or limit itself. The screen itself takes the shape of the image with which it seems to limit itself. It is awareness itself that takes the form of mind, and it is in the form of mind that awareness seems to limit itself. So when that mind, when the mind-made self traces back to its source, it doesn't find a temporary finite mind. It finds pure awareness. And at that moment it realizes, I haven't suddenly become infinite awareness. I was always infinite awareness. Or rather, I am eternally infinite awareness. I veiled myself with my own creativity. <laughs> 